Okay. Hi guys. Uh, we've just spent a few hours refreshing our video here, so a new version, um, going over the installation and hope uh, you'll find it interesting. Made one or two small changes that we've become, become aware of just to, to make it easier for everybody. Um, there's been changes, uh, basically the two different sections on the, on the original buses here uh, on the chassis. One has a, this bridge, perfectly symmetrical bridge removed for the steering box which would have sat in there. Um, and the bracketry we had worked perfectly for this shape chassis forward section chassis section we're only talking about this little section here and uh, we became aware that one customer had a problem with the bracket fitting and that's when we noticed this we've got uh, two different sections of chassis uh, available and we believe pre-may 57 it was this shape uh, which i've taken this information from a brazilian bus that's in the paint shop locally at the moment and uh, it's so completely different from the one I've just shown you on the green display which is this so what we've one of the improvements we've made is that we've made this bracket this u-channel will now fit both chassis formats so it takes a triangle three bolts on this chassis but on the other one it utilizes this bracket so it's making it easy that we're supplying something that will fit all cars, we hope, without any further problems. Uh, and we've learned a little something there. We also made a, 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 an Im improvement to, to make bleeding the brakes easier. Um, we've shortened this section by 50 millimeters. It's not lost any strength, but what that allowed was if you didn't have any fluid in your system, you can now get a full travel when you're bleeding the brakes before we were limited it would go down to about there it would work perfectly if you had a fully bled system already but we've made it so that's that's not going to be an issue otherwise you'd have had to take that bracket off to bleed the brakes without a power bleeder so uh that's about it really we've we've it's the same proven parts that we've used for years um and we just try constantly to improve it and make it fit anybody's split screen bus anywhere in the world. Uh, it's not as easy as it would seem, but we think we've made a, a useful uh, addition here. So enjoy the video. All right, the first step in, uh, in the assembly of the, the, the steering conversion is to cut out uh, the supplied template. We give you in the fitting instructions a page showing the template in actual size. So all you do is cut around that, which is what we've done here, and secure it to the chassis with two M10 bolts. The section on the left here is where you're going to felt pen, mark around, and then remove the material, as you'll see in a minute. Here we can see the material that we've just removed and um, that should give you the perfect clearance that you need. Right, next step is to fit the main mounting bracket. That's this fellow here that Sean's got. And as you can see, we've got the, uh, the chassis jig is turned upside down. So you're going to see it as you'll see it from underneath the car when you fit it. Right, here we go with the first three bolts, going in the main steering box mount. Now you've taken the steering box off, there's three, well five captive nuts. These are the three on the side. three M10 by 25 hex screws with washers gone in there now. Now we're going to do the other side with two screws. The first one also is an M10 by 25 hex screw with a washer. That one 
down. As you can see at the moment, we're just doing them finger tight. Now we've got um, an M8, M10 by 30 hex mm -hmm. cap, head, cap head, that's it, with, with a touch of Loctite going in. Just a dab. No washer on this one. So this is the only fastener on the car that doesn't have a washer. And the reason is for clearance with the bevel box. Okay. So now we're going to torque the uh, cap head up and we're going for 35 Newton meters. And you'll hear it click. There it is. So that's 35 Newton meters. And now we're going to tighten up the hexes. Now, this one uh, we can't get our, our torque uh, wrench on there, so we're doing a spanner and what we would call FT. I won't, I, won't, I won't explain. Right, now we're going in with a socket and an extension, 10 mil socket, 17 mil size for 10 mil bolt. And it's 70 newton meters. And 70 newton meters, and there we go. There we go, so that's all five mounting fasteners secured properly and completed and we're ready now to look at the next step the, the last two holes on that plate which are we've already drilled them on our jig but we'll just show you what you would do you'd put a, an 8 mil drill bit into the hole just run it start a pilot hole you'll leave, leave a couple of indents which then if you take a 6 mil drill bit and go in on the holes you've just made and the same with the other one and he would go right through to the uh, other side of the cross member so try and be careful and keep the thing level you want you want the hole to be uh, parallel on the other side so concentrate on the level that's it and then we'll put in the uh, M8s. There's a square plate which stops the cross member cracking. Goes on the other side of the bolt. <clears throat> We're just using uh, ordinary M8 standard nuts um, as we're taking this thing on and off. Um, we're not putting nylocks or PT nuts on any of these screws today. So just standard nuts so we can get it on and off and do whatever we want to do with this jig at home. Obviously on, the, on your installation we'll be using the lock nuts. Once again square plate on the other side. Just make sure the, uh, the square plates run nice and sort of parallel with the cross member on the other side. You can see the ends just level there. Always looks nicer if they're square. Now this time we're going to use uh, use the torque wrench again, but we're dropping it right down to 10 newton meter uh, because we've got a very soft cross member here. It's two millimeter wall, I believe. Maybe 2.5. There we go. That's the first click. There we go. That's the second one done. So that's all the mounting bolts 
taken care of. You've got the two small M8s at the back we've just done. We've got the cap head M10 there. Very important that that's a cap head and it hasn't got a spring washer on or any washer on. And then we've got the other M10 by 25 at the front of the chassis. So that's that section complete. Right, we're now going to fix the bevel box and um, accompanying the box itself are two spaces. We've got one of 4mm thickness and one of 2mm thickness. We've noticed that the frames, the chassis, can vary along that thickness of that, that uh, cross member there slightly. So um, you might get away with just the 4 I'll show you when the bevel box is in how tight it can be. I mean, four, five, or six mil spacing is somewhere where you're going to be, and by putting the four and the two together, we're pretty sure it's going to suit everybody. So um, that's what we're doing. We've now got the bevel box. There's a bit of a knack to getting it in the hole. Um, it's tight fit. We didn't, we didn't cut any more out of the chassis than we wanted. Um, for obvious reasons so you can see now the bevel box is snug to that cutout you made earlier and if you look down that gap there there's uh, that's the gap that we've uh, you, you'll achieve with the six and the two mil spacer but that can be variable but uh, hopefully um, you, you've got what you need now good and what we're going to secure the bevel box with is a little cap head um, M8 by 30, I think, Sean. M10. Uh, oh, sorry, M10 by 30 cap head with a uh, spring washer on it. four in loosely before we go too far leave them hanging there just get through two or three threads on them there we go <coughs> and set and then I just quickly whizzle the drive on the uh, little extension there just fingers on that to start with wind them all in bit by bit Newton meters here. We're, we're not going too mad on uh, on these because they're going into aluminium. We don't want to overstress the, the casting, and we're doing them diagonally, just as if you were doing a cylinder head or a wheel. So there we go. Third one coming up. There we go. That's that job taken care, care of, nice and easy. Right, now to fix, uh, fix the cross member in. Uh, this is the cross members, very, very important. Do not leave it out. This is the thing that um, takes the loading off this corner here on the, uh, on the main, main mount. Um, and, and gives it rigidity, particularly at slow speed when you're parking and um, uh, moving slowly, tremendous loading then. Um, so this, this cross member has been developed over several versions. Um, we got a little bit surprised. We've got three vehicles here and this display stand. And this, the brackets that we made fitted those perfectly. And then out of the blue, uh, one of our customers' phones said the bracket, the, the channel doesn't fit. 
and um, could we look into it? And we crawled all over it again, couldn't find any fault. And then uh, I got the chance to look at a Brazilian bus, which uh, was being in a paint shop near us, and we saw this. And um, this, these two drawings represent the front section of the chassis and this bracket will fit this chassis like that and it will go on the other one which is the actual green one here like that and there will be two bolts through here this bracket becomes redundant on a vehicle with with a, a, a smooth continual arch like a bridge here you can see going back to those pictures that's that's what we've got on the green display stand here simple arch and the, that uh, that uh, channel will fit that one and that one but you can see here is the difference completely different and uh, we've made that bracket it will fit both chassis perfectly now so uh, hopefully we've got everything covered. Um, right, are you going to uh, have a go at fitting that? Yep. Off we go. Right, here we go. Sean's going to fit the, uh, the, the cross member here. He'll just explain the difference in chassis. Um, but the procedure's the same with, with both types and then drop an M10 in there, M10 by 25 screw with a, with a washer on both sides and once again we're using ordinary nuts but in the kit you'll get a lot of nut. So we're just going to finger that one uh, loose and drop two M10 bolts in those slots, push them to the extreme ends, like that and like that. And that puts the channel itself in a parallel straight line to the other bracket. And what we're now going to do, Sean's got this little box in, uh, box in brackets um, and, a, and a square plate. And the square plate will go on the cross member As you can see, there's a small triangular shaped gusset plate, that one that Sean's holding now, that, um, that uh, allows the cross member to have a firm, firm landing on the, the chassis itself. So uh, it's a very strong little bracket, must be fitted and will tighten down, basically trapping itself on, on either side of the chassis. So that's nice and easy. We're going to put a, a hole through uh, through the frame. We're going to check that everything's parallel. The little square plate is a bit loose there. Um, yeah, just pull that around a bit. Um, everything is correct at that end. There's the, the M10 that's holding it uh, secured, that one, and then we've got these two still spaced apart. We're just checking along there that that looks square. Uh, and then Sean will drill through that gusset plate and through the two holes. We'd already done them and we probably spotted the tape. But it's just to show you the procedure. Now I need to open them up to a pen. Okay. So now going to drop the uh, M10 hot screws through with a washer. Checking every washer is the right way up even. <laughs> That's that looking good.
Wherever I go, your elbow gets in the way. <laughs> okay, come on there and take a look. There we go. You can see the bracket there on the landing, right next to the bumper bumper bracket. Newton meters. 70 newton meters going into those three bolts. There we go, a bit, bit, bit of uh, elbow power there. Those three are tightened up, we'll just now fully tighten that one. Seventy newtons again, seventy newton meters. Good. That's, that's that bracket ready, fully installed. Um, the next step will be the, the rack. Okay, now at um, uh, almost uh, getting towards the final stage, this is fitting the rack. Sean's got two parts here. He's got the rack in his hand and a UJ. Um, if you think the rack looks a bit dull, um, it is our test and prototype one that's been uh, used many, many times. Yours will be all nice and shiny, but we don't want to keep making shiny ones dirty. And the same with the UJ. We've got a UJ going on there. It's two different sizes in that UJ of splines. There's, um, there's uh, 36, I think it is, 36 spline onto the rack and uh, 48, I think, on the uh, other one. Not that that bothers you, but there's just two sizes. And the wrap on will go straight on there now. And then look how easy this is. Onto the bubble box, give it a whittle and we're on. Uh, so that's where it's going to be sat. And now we're going to put the uh, bolt through the lock bolt um, through the UJ. So we've got a sequence going on here. We've got the bevel boxes securely mounted here. We're now going to tighten that, that UJ bolt up fully so that that's, uh, that's locked in position. But then we're going to pop the uh, connecting bolt there into the rack. And we've got a washer and a nut on either side. We use some um, PT, prevailing torque aircraft nuts, um, in the kit. We've just got ordinary nuts on here. Uh, so we're going to tighten these up. 35. Yeah. Okay. 35. Yeah. There we go, so that's both both bolts tightened there. Now at that stage it didn't matter. We, um, with this system, it's very flexible. There's a lot of tolerance and sliding here with the rack. So this isn't loaded in any way, the, uh, the UJ. It's tight there, it's tight there. Um, it doesn't matter which bolt you tighten up first out of those two, because either way, they're, they're, the rack is not stressed at this point, it's totally loose as you can see. So now we're going to use um, some cap heads 
there's two different lengths because uh, different thickness of materials are going on. Um, so be sure to get those the right way round. We've got little, um, like a double washer here, a little uh, packing strip, um, which is going to fit on the underside of those two bolts like that. So it's like a double barrel washer, basically. And the second washer and nut going on on the other side. Now we're doing get them the uh, nuts up the thread a bit, but uh, you're not tightening them. This needs to be movable at the moment. So the rack will still, uh, still wiggle and jiggle a bit. So spacer plate, spot washer on the, the uh, reverse side. So we've got that uh, double pla double hole plate goes on first, then the washers, then the, the, the nut. Normally gravity's on your side at this point. <laughs> You nearly got it finished without too much struggling. <laughs> there we go. The channel where all those nuts are ending up is only 40 mil wide, so whilst it's not hard, it's a bit fiddly. So once they're on like that, we're in business. Sean's just demonstrating uh, demonstrating the movement on the rack right now. So the next thing is to um, to lock the rack down. What I will just say, we have actually had somebody say when they took their rack out the box that it wasn't right. The angle of the tie rod. Uh, was different to that in all the photographs and the pictures. To correct it, all you had to do was that. So uh, made us um, smile a little bit. But hopefully everybody else will get it right now. Okay. So we've got an Allen key holding the top of the nut socket on the other end. We've got all four, four fasteners in. The rack's comfortable and happy, nothing stretched or being pulled or compressed. To 35 newton meters. 35 newton meters is what we're going for. So now we've got a complete uh, rack system bolted down. We've got to do an uh, interesting little thing with uh, centering the rack, um, which we'll uh, go over with you in a, in a minute. Right, now we're going to centre the rack, which is critical, uh, very easy to do. So Sean's measuring is hooked over the end of the tie rod up there and found a point on the rack which is nice and easy to find and we're going to go for that hole in the centre of the pinion there and we've got a measurement of three, it should be, when it's fully extended you should get 390, give or take 390, yeah I'm happy with that and then Sean's winding the rack fully in and he's going to take a measurement from the same two points, that's at the end of the tie rod. To two, the, eight, two eight zero. And we've got two eight zero. 
So now we're going to do the math, as the Americans would say. Um, here it is. Um, what we've done now is record the fully extended length of 390, the fully closed length of 280, which is uh, 110 mil of uh, available travel. So now we divide that by two, which gives us 55. Now, the fully closed length was 280. So taking the 280, we add 55 millimeters to it, giving us a rack center of 335. You can think about that for a minute, but that's, that's the way it's done. So uh, now we set that to 335. Three, three, five. Cock on. So now, without moving or closing or extending the rack, Sean's fitting the tie rod end. Just get it, uh, you know, uh, uh, several turns down the rack. Now, what we're doing now is we're getting the idler arm. If I come around here, we want the idler arm to be centered and a good means of eyeballing this is uh, to get it in the line with the adjuster which we know we put in the middle of the tubes um, so that's centered and Sean is just adjusting the tie rod end there we go until it goes in the idler arm hole there and that looks pretty good to me so we're going to lock that where it is And we got a nut for that tie rod end? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, well, we'll put a nut on there for the, the next little snippet. Um, so that's how you centre the rack anyway. And uh, we'll continue in a second. Okay, now we're going to fix the, uh, the, the column, the, the actual last UJ, which will connect the bevel box to the steering shaft. So uh, we flipped the, um, the stand over, as you can see now. We're looking from above now, and we have got the benefit that there's no floor in the way, but at least you can see uh, what's involved. Um, so Sean's going to connect the, the, um, the UJ on that column. All we do is pull the column up a bit there, and then lower lower the shaft into the spines that's it and then already we've got uh, we've got steering that um, operates you can see it there I'll let Sean finish off as I say you'll be doing this from underneath the car a little bit fiddly, but there is access there. Now you've got uh, 48 splines on that um, steering column. So if your steering wheel doesn't align when you've got this assembled, uh, with the wheels dead ahead and the steering all pointing forward, if your steering wheel is crooked to all that, you can draw it out of one spline, rotate it and try it two or three splines round. Um, there's sufficient splines that will allow you to get it set nicely. Um, but it's hard to necessarily get that exactly right first time unless you take a, a bit of time and care. We're just putting it together here just to, so you can see, see what's involved. And that's the top bolt in there. These are HT bolts um, with, with uh, plenty of smooth shaft on the shank um, and the correct tensile strength. Never change the bolts. These bolts are 12.9s or 10? 10. 10.9. 10. 10. 10.9 tensile strength on these bolts. And they will um, accept the torque setting we can give you in a minute. And 35. 35. Newton, Newton meters. meters. Um, whoops! Take the paint out. Why don't you? 
and uh, and it'll lock them nice and tight with no fear of uh, working loose. The fear is, and we have actually had a customer, in fact, I think we've had two customers do it, or, or mechanics that have worked on the car, have replaced a 10.9 bolt with an 8.8 .8 bolt. They tighten it up, stretch the bolt, and then uh, the UJ can rotate on the splines. It's a definite no-no. So the, the, as it says in our fitting instructions that came with your kit, the tensile strength of the bolt and the torque settings are vital and they must be adhered to. So there we go, we've got um, both both uh, bolts tightened up on the UJ, Sean's rotating the steering wheel and you can see the steering, the steering uh, the rack, rack doing its thing, the other arm moving, which would obviously pull and push tie rods and give you proper steering. So uh, that's what you get. Big smile from Sean. <laughs>